Welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and sometimes even the curious all come together to create art, to inspire each other, to uh, you know, engage in panels, discussions, all sorts of great uh, educational and entertaining uh, programming about tattoos. Uh, tonight's this show is Art Jam with Renee Little uh, from Oklahoma City. Wait, not from Oklahoma City, currently beaming from Oklahoma City from her amazing shop that she's always working on. And if you are interested in, if you're interested in beaming in, if you're an artist and want to paint alongside Renee, then you should download the Reinventing the Tattoo app at either of the app stores, either the Apple Store or uh, Google Play, I think it is. Or you could go straight to community.reinventingthetattoo.com. And if you go to the event listing, I'll show you what that looks like then you can find the Zoom link. We, you might be watching this on Facebook or on YouTube, but we can't put out the links there because then spammers get it, and that's horrible. Um, oh, if you're on the app, the link is going to be... Uh, you'll see it. Oh, shit. Okay, past events here. Uh, the Zoom link right here, artists zoom in. If you're on the website, it's a little trickier because some of the timing is Greenwich Mean Time. That's my developer's issue. Or it's my issue. Point being is uh, you could find this link right here um, on the schedule along with all of our other shows. So I guess while we're here and this is actually working and streaming out, then... I will let you know about some of these other upcoming shows that we have on the Reinventing Network. So this is a perfect time to let us know where you're beaming in from the chat room uh, and or to share it around. So here we go. Uh, Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, we have a professional webinar where you can build your own Paul Rogers style tattoo machine with Tony Urbanic. He is using hand tools to file these frames down and put them together. It's out of control. It's an hour and a half to two hours every Tuesday. And no matter when you're watching this, you could always check out the replays and they'll be well worth it. The recipes don't change. It's a Paul Rogers style machine. This is old school. Um, so reinventing the tattoo.com slash build a tattoo machine. Then tomorrow, Tuesday, February 23rd at 2 p.m. Eastern, we have an art history discussion with Brandon Bean and Guy Aitchison. It's awesome. Art uh, Guy's been doing all sorts of art talks with great tattooers that have all sorts of amazing artists of influence that they're talking about and we're all discovering. Uh, let's see, at uh, Wednesday, the 24th at noon, we've got a spotlight sponsor with Inkjet Stencils. Don is going to demonstrate the how the stencil setup works and you are going to have a chance to download or to get uh, some free stencils sent to you as well as some other samples and goodies. It's going to be a fun uh, stream. That's Wednesday at noon. Let's see, Thursday at noon Eastern, we have Tattoo Collecting Podcast every week. They're on their 25th episode, it looks like here, which is pretty awesome. Uh, uh, Fawn Baker and Jordan Rickus are always interviewing tattoo collectors. And I think this one is for uh, focusing on day two, the day after uh, getting tattooed because a lot of, like, and a lot of the collectors have big pieces and the healing process is, uh, something that we could talk about forever. Really? <laughs> Let's see. Sundays at one o'clock Eastern, we have a reinventing drawing group with Jason Lesser, uh, similar to these art jams where you're encouraged to beam in with your homework and draw. We have Monday mornings at 9 AM Eastern with Jake Meeks from the Fireside Tattoo Network and then every Monday night at 9 p.m. and that's actually happening right after this art jam is Guy Aitchison's subscriber only uh, exercise group. So if it's a, a what, $300 a year, it's a, it's well worth the, uh, the full online course with dozens of webinars. This isn't the sales pitch. We'll talk about that later. This is uh, the schedule. So at nine o'clock, if uh, Eastern, you should be beaming in. Now, we have all sorts of other special events coming up. We have an art jam with Stefano Fabridi the first Wednesday of the month at 1 o'clock. It's is an art jam in Italian, which is pretty cool. So if you speak Italian or you want to learn it, uh, let's see. Every other Sunday at 8, 8 p.m., 7 p.m., we'll, we'll get these times right. Tent Talk with uh, Robert Shaw where he's catching up with uh, talking about tattoo history, and he's got a whole uh, uh, Milton's Isis uh, tattoo tent. And uh, it, it's crazy. The uh, All of the shows can be found here in the library. 
and videos, and you'll see we've got uh, the in-house series. These are all the shows with Guy, the Tattoo Collecting Podcast, the Art Jams where these go, the drawing groups. Uh, let's Talk Tattoo with Mark from Needle Jig. Actually, Renee's got an awesome interview in here. Um, let's see. We've got a whole bunch of them here, but yeah, Renee Little, boom. This is a mm -hmm. fantastic interview with uh, Renee and Mark that you definitely need to check out. Um, History of Tattoo Conventions with uh, Alex Van Dutch from World Tattoo Events, the best uh, online resource for tattoo conventions. And if you are missing conventions like we are, then this is a, a great folder for you to throw on in the background. All, all of these shows are perfect for your waiting room or while, to put on while you're tattooing because there is almost endless amounts of content we have here. But so uh, the convention promoter for the Nepal Tattoo Convention, Marco from uh, one of the, the very first uh, Italian Tattoo Convention, Derb from Hell City fame, Kim from the Brussels show. Uh, I think Troy is going to be the next uh, interviewee. So that's a history of tattoo conventions. We've got Drunk Critique, which is exactly as amazing and horrifying as you might think it would be. Uh, the holiday special here is... I think it's nine hours, nine hours and 23 minutes. No shit. It's out of control. Actually, Tony did a write up on it in the uh, new tattoo society magazine. And, uh, uh, Joe cap came in and started busting up some China and, and Paul Booth came in and cooled everyone down and it was out of control. It was, uh, it was so much, it was so much fun. We haven't done one for three months, but we are going to do one again, March 9th. So, uh, if you are into the drunk critique, we've got live from the Castro, uh, Haley Adams interviewing LGBTQ, POC, all sorts of awesome tattooer stories that you probably haven't heard on the general circuit yet. Uh, virtual tattoo gathering replace. It's a little out of control. And I, I better get a move on here. Let's talk. thank our sponsors real quick who make these uh, webcasts available to everyone for free, really. Uh, Loose Screw Tattoo here, uh, Jesse Smith's shop in Richmond, Virginia. I have the thing fired up right here. Uh, now, uh, I don't know if you, if you don't know Loose Screw, it's a, a very reputable shop in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, wicked busy, so they're looking for somebody that can handle the, the color tattoos, the black and gray tattoos. Uh, they're looking for an artist who is motivated. Uh, you know, check this out. This is out of control. All supplies covered with health, dental, paid vacation, and 401k options. Uh, this is perfect for someone who's looking to build a solid foundation as an artist. You will get uh, an education of a lifetime there at Loose Screw. They have world-class guests. Their residents are all awesome. The art is off the hook. And uh, let's see, other keywords to sprinkle throughout this uh, uh, help wanted are, uh, it's a busy shop. Uh, make sure you have a good attitude. You're eager to learn, et cetera, et cetera. If you let Loose Screw Tattoo know that you are applying because you found out about them from the reinventing the tattoo community, then not only will they know that we sent you, but they will also know that you have a proper attitude. Go figure, or, or very likely have a proper attitude. Okay, inkjet stencils. These uh, printers print out your stencils so you can treat your artwork and then boom, out comes uh, the stencil. They're using uh, Epson printers and you could see if you get an oversized printer, look at this. If you're doing lots of sleeves and back pieces, uh, Andre Malcolm here, printing out a full full back piece and one stencil. Um, and we have some webinars on how to, um, let me see, can I get back here easily? Uh, there's a, a, a webinar on Oh, here we go. Inkjet videos and free test info. So we have a digital editing for inkjet stencils about an hour long from Frank Conception uh, down in Connecticut, although I think he was beaming in from the Dominican Republic. Um, but yeah, so he was talking about how to edit your files and then the free inkjet stencil test information is behind that link. Okay, I think that I have said enough for now. And we are going to beam in with Renee Little, who's uh, painting an octopus. And uh, yeah, well, if you are interested in beaming in, click on the links and then we will do the things. Other than that, uh, I'm here to um, surf around if we have any uh, artists or inspirations that we want to check out. But other than that, uh, I'm going to hop in the background here. Uh, hello, You're hello. Can you hear me okay? 
perfectly. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thanks for having me on. Um, there has been like a lot going on and I'm really glad to just be able to paint tonight. Um, and I think the last time I really did was uh, with Nick Baxter and that was super fun. Um, so I'm really kind of glad to get back on the seat again, as they say. Um, I uh, wanted to work on a painting. I feel like the last couple paint nights I've been doing underpaintings, um, which I usually do. I do several in a row. So they all keep the same color tones and they keep so basically the same theme. If I like start a painting and finish a painting and try to do a series that in that order, it, it kind of gets a little disorganized for me. So I'm ready. I have enough to where um, I can start with oil and get on there and start tackling and finishing these things. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but so this is all uh, first, uh, uh, it's all done with acrylic and I use a, a dark, dark charcoal pastel and uh, mix in gesso while I'm making my painting. So by the time that that underpainting is done, the entire canvas or board in this case um, is completely ready to receive oil and to structurally uh, hold oil. Um, I, using, I got some new brushes as well, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, got some new linseed oil. It's always good to like refresh in your, your tools every now and again. Um, but uh, I'm just using um, a really kind of varied palette. I kind of keep to the basics and then mix from there. Um, so I would say if you get your primaries down and you just kind of go around, like I have my special ones, like I always have to have Prussian blue out. I always have to have a certain kind of teal out. Um, but at least if you get high quality pigments, um, you won't have any issues with um, the pigments being diluted basically or uh, too transparent uh, right out of the tube. So you can really just mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. And, um, you know, if you are a tattooer or an avid painter or anyone that deals with uh, rock pigments, you know, you kind of get a good feel for how to mix certain ones. So I think I have one yellow for some reason. I just can't get it to mix with certain things. So I just, you know, try a different product and see if that's, if it looks best or not or better or not. Um, but I'm kind of going in first uh, and adding all my shadows to like my deepest layers. Um, I tend to work uh, very much so uh, from dark to light. Um, and it, cause, and it's sometimes like, I don't know, I've heard some people kind of get weird off by this or scared of this because what if it's like watercolor, you know, what if you go too dark? But um, I think it just comes from tattooing. I'm very used to just, you know, keeping track of everything and where it needs to go. Um, and I'm using a rather large brush too for this area because I do kind of want this um, to be kind of put off into the distance, you know, create that nice depth of field. So sometimes when I use a larger brush and I'm a little looser with it, it already kind of adds that nice little haze, you know, like that forced aperture uh, if you're doing photography. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna kind of go in and work on these textures a bit. Um, if you're watching, feel free to ask questions. I love questions, even though I can't talk all day about octopus and all of its mightiness. <laughs> um, I really do want to kind of capture that this guy's more of like a, a weird little alien figure. I, for some reason, I'm just fantas I fantasize about octopuses just kind of traveling through space on their own accord in their own time frame. Um, so I kind of make them a little alien, um, but it's, it's really easy to do that because they basically are aliens. Um, wonderful little things. But, let's see what's going on. I wanted to mention, Gabe, um, yeah, I've seen like a lot of stuff on, this, on, the, on the forum, on the app, and especially with Derb and all the interviews going on, it looks really, really good. I'm like really proud to be able to do this with you guys. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's uh, amazing that everyone's country, you know, contributing the, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty out of control. Thank you. And again, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the, the painting jams that you're doing and uh, that everyone's bringing in is, uh, it's pretty, pretty sick. The, the library That's just pretty, keeps growing. 
Mm -hmm. No, it's great. I really have to upload um, a bunch of my time lapses. I just have to oh, yeah. find the good ones. I have like all these ones where you can see the back of my head for, you know, like 20 minutes and then right. uh, yeah, go through and edit it a little bit just so you, know, you can see it. But um, when, you, when you start no, I, uh, documenting, there's it turns into editing for days. It's for like, oh. days. I don't know how you do this. Um, I, I've been kind of getting uh, a little bit more crappy with it just because um, I don't know. I have a buddy who got TikTok viral in like a month, you know, and I was like, we, we're we're healthily very competitive with each other. Nice. And uh, yeah, we move each other, you know. Without him, I don't think I would get my butt off as much as I do off the ground. But um, I've been trying to, you know, um, stay on top of things and the way the world is, you know, virtual or, um, yeah, I guess like anything virtual, anything online or videos, like people are kind of getting bored with still images. They want to see videos. You know, uh, yeah, video has always kind of been... Uh, it's always more engaging, right? That's why the movies are, you know, if you could see this really big, it'd be even better, right? And oh, if it was yeah. in 3D or free VR versions, you know. Oh, but, yes. Um, yes, yes. I want to talk to you guys about that. Uh, oh, so I'm I got not, I'm it. Not, you oh, got the Oculus? Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Um, and I need to figure out how, I need to talk to your guy about how to record yourself while you're in it. Because I've mm. just been drawing and painting and building and like, I just, I'm hooked. Oh, I'm absolutely awesome. hooked. It is so awesome. Um, that's, uh, Jordan, Jordan Rookus is the uh, fellow Rookus, that okay. uh, he does the tattoo collecting podcast. Oh, okay, and, good. Uh, yeah, I need to get with him. Um, there's so many like, uh, does he, does he, uh, well, I'll ask him, but uh as soon as i went into uh there's this one if you get a little bit more advanced version you can mess with the lighting so you can like build whatever you want to and then change the lighting on it like different color tones everything um and this is like i think this is definitely a game changer after i've messed around with it awesome and, yeah uh i mean besides like i don't know i played chess with my father across from me that was cool oh yeah. on the uh on the vr yeah, yeah, I have a I have an apartment there. So he uh, had a VR set up too. Uh huh. Yeah, I got him one for Christmas, um, and he hasn't touched it because he's you know he's like I don't know what to do with this, so I I had to walk him through it um, and get him like to the right place. And now I think he's hooked. I think he had no idea about what this was. You know. So you could play chess with people from around the world in VR. Uh huh. Oh, you can play games with them, play chess with them. I just figured out how to slap my friend Nico. Um, yeah. You can go, you can go see concerts. You can't oh, like yeah, next to okay, your friend. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Um, but that was so incredibly nice to just be able to look at my dad, make a funny expression. I mean, it's his avatar, huh. but it's his expressions. Um, just what do you, you mean? Know, like, so it's like, like <laughs> taking a picture of him. No. Uh, so no, you, yeah. for each app has, uh, like you can make your own avatars so you can like build it kind of like Sims, you know, you can customize a little character to like kind of look like you. Um, so each one, uh, some of them are pretty detailed and some of them are real amateur. Um, but the real detailed ones will recognize and pick up if you smile or if you mm. frown or if you laugh or if you like raise your eyebrow a little bit. It's crazy. That is awesome. Yeah. And it's just getting better. I signed up uh, to be part of this new world building thing. I don't think I'll get it. But um, yeah, Facebook is building like customizable worlds. So you can build your own world, build your huh. own environment, and then have Facebook. your friends come in. Yeah. And then have your Look, friends come visit you. Those bastards. Those bastards. Sucking us in. Yeah, I know. And I'm like, oh, it's so obvious what they're doing, but I want it so much. Oh, hey, actually, so, speaking uh, of, they're letting, uh, looks like they're letting me stream again. Oh, yay. Uh, let me share this around.
Yeah, what I'm doing now, if anyone wonders, I'm going in with my little brush and getting into all these little cracks and I, I'm making sure just to brain out my foreground as much as possible and really going in there with that contrast, you can kind of see, I'm just kind of etching around instead of wildly painting, just carefully pushing that pigment up, up to that border as much as you possibly can. I've been thinking about different ways to like make paint night, like even for viewers or anyone wants to come in later and watch it. I'm like, maybe I can just do funny accents or <laughs> 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 like, I can't Bob Ross it. He's so calm for so long. <laughs> but like, what if like a good Wisconsin accent? You know, oh my, you know, we're gonna just come in here, you know, build out some of these layers. <laughs> You know, yes. you just, you got to itch around and make that contrast happen. You just got to do it. There you go. I don't think I could keep it up though. Getting a little <laughs> bit of uh, Facebook juice coming though. We got a, at least a, another couple dozen people watching. Hello, everybody. Oh, Let us know in the chat hello, room everybody. Uh, how it's going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone have questions. Please ask away. I need to figure out how I can get a camera on my palette so people can see me do crazy things. Mm. Uh, Minicam is a good uh, tool. There's actually on the, reinvent, on the uh, Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel, there's mm -hmm. a clip of Jason Lesser going through his uh, setup. Oh, very nice. Let me check that out. You're giving me all these things to check out when I, I barely get Instagram time. <laughs> Yeah, we, you know, I'm uh, pretty much done with Instagram, so that's yeah. one, of the, one of the ways I could do it. Yeah, how are you feeling about that? I'm, uh, I think, yeah, but I, I try just not to give it too much energy, you know. Um, I used to fret over it so much because everyone made me feel like I needed to fret over it. And that I was just being irresponsible and lazy, but I was like, no, this is literally soul sucking. <laughs> that's why I'm not doing it. Yeah, no. if you check out uh, Jeff Gogway's new blog on his uh, 26swords.com or 26swordstattoo.com, mm -hmm. um, it's good. He's, he's completely off. He actually deleted his. Oh, so he talks about it. Why? And his, I mean, he's got. Some yeah, nice just uh, he always makes nice little, you know, nice, not little blogs, nice long blogs. And, yeah, no, uh, Jeff is. I mean, he's like a fathomless well of knowledge. And I mean, I, I've. I've never mind to get some cool tips from Jeff, but no, I'm proud of him. He got off of there. I think like the more that we do it, but then again, like TikTok is right around the corner. You know, I think there's always going to be something. Um, yeah. I don't think Jeff's going there though. I think he's. Uh... Yeah. Well, I mean, he's definitely fine too. I'm sure with his clientele as well, but for all these, younger people in the industry you know it's like all the free advertisement you can get the better but i think it's like how much they do it. it's almost it's like you know what is a when does an addiction go bad it's when you don't you don't live your life yeah you know and it's questionable i suppose like how much you really can get out of it right especially these days like you just have to i mean if you're addicted to it then it'll deliver but, you know, if you're just posting up and then getting out of there, then, you know, that's not what the software yeah. wants. You know, the software wants yeah. you to be on there three times a day or 10 times a day. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. And I just, I know that for a fact that whatever, I, I took a break for, I think, a good solid month and a half. Like, I just wasn't having it, you know, like life happened and I needed to pay attention to that. And I recognize that I have definitely gotten off whatever algorithm that I was on because I just stayed the same. <laughs> like there was nothing. I mean, people would, I had more comments and I had more exposure. I felt like real interaction with people. Like I, I started noticing like, oh, okay, yes, I actually tattoo all these people or have tattooed them. And that's who's following me where before it was like, I think I was jumping up a hundred people like at least like every couple of weeks or something. And I didn't get as many comments. So I was like, this is really fishy. This is really weird. But that little break definitely showed me kind of how the algorithms work. 
like if you don't yeah if you don't like involve yourself with it they push you back so we do have uh, so Neil uh, Foster's in the chat room from Wisconsin. He's saying uh, great, uh, good work. Uh, I'm just starting to oil paint. Do you have any tips? Ooh, yes. Um, go ahead if you're starting into doing it. I would just suggest you know get a small set of really good oil paints. I'd say a small set so you're not spending hundreds of dollars. Um, and you can practice blending and mixing your own tones, you know, like try not getting black. That's always fun. Uh, make your own blacks, you know, discover how, like do some test samples, you know, get a bunch of free gesso little boards and just like uh, figure out different tones and color and like how, you know, how rich you can get things, how dark you can make things. Um, and that'll kind of give you a really good to practice on each color you have and how it functions. Um, Cause like I was, I was saying earlier that um, most oil paint like is different um, depending on the brand um, and it's how much pigment they actually put into uh, the tube. Um, so, and there's a lot, of course, there's a lot of fillers and a lot of things that um, some companies can put in there and uh, give it its own character and its own life. So, uh, and get good brushes because if, I, I always say if like, if you try something, you just go cheap um you might not like it because it it seems harder to do like harder to do things and it does like cheap oil paint is a bastard to <laughs> try to manipulate and control um and I, that's the one thing i've noticed with anyone i've ever like taught or helped you know get involved with it is like i always have them use mine usually um until they like discover that they love it and get their own um but uh, do that um explore you know canvas versus board i'll say that i've been painting for you know probably well over 25 years and once i started painting on board i never went back to canvas um it doesn't have any bounce um you know this is just my personal preference as well but it doesn't have any bounce it doesn't have any like other textures um when you're hanging it around, you know, you'll never have that little bowing effect that can happen, especially with oil. You know, if you leave it glossy, if you have like one bow here and then a bow here, and then you'll see all of this shiny and none of this shiny, you know, it can, it's really hard to light sometimes for me, canvas paintings that are oil. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's all about afterwards and when you hang it and what it looks like. So, um, say to, um, yeah, start small and work your way up. You know, it's all it's all these little tricks to not feel like you've defeated yourself. Um, if you get done with like one little thing, then you can congratulate yourself and then move on to a bigger project. Um, watch Bob Ross. He's yeah, he's awesome too. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and he also explains things really, really kind of carefully um, while he's just painting these very calming, serene things. And also watch these programs too, because you have a lot of modern artists on here that are really awesome. Um, yeah, I'll do a little bit of a, oil. I can do a little tour. Um, so yeah. uh, uh, Oliver says uh, greetings to you and Renee. He, hello, hello. Uh, from Germany, he's doing, they're doing uh, on Friday afternoons, uh, a massive German art, art jam, which is crazy cool. Oh, that is crazy um, cool. That's in a, uh, let's see. So Neil, Neil Foster says, uh, what brand paints? Oh, let's see. Uh, I got a lot, a lot, a lot. Let's see. Let's see what I mostly have in here. I have some Williamsburg. It's um, it's all right. It does a job. I do like a little bit of the lighter colors in that. A lot of gambling. Gambling is here. I'll show. Oh, do I? Is that one? Some Williamsburg. Uh, let's see. Oh, the Daniel Smith um, oil pick. Oh, these things are amazing. And this is my Prussian blue. You can tell how much it's been through the runaround already. Um, and I think those are like my top three that I use. Um, and they're all really, really good. You know, they're 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 not like the best, best, but uh, they do have this really, really amazing. Um, like the pigments are really rich. Um, you know, they just last and last and last. Um, oh, and you don't have to use a whole lot either. Um, you know, acrylic, you can go through really quite quickly. 
Um, but that was one thing, Gabe, I like that Nick talked about um, was how to kind of preserve your palette as well and preserve your paints because they are really expensive. I think sure. I feel like I, I mean, I've like will be cursed by the gods if I waste oil paint or acrylic paint even. Um, so you want to use really, really tiny amounts because they go and stretch a really long way, especially if they're good. And, and take care of your palette. Um, I do like to, sometimes I use like just some um, sheets of plexiglass that I can put in a big Tupperware and put that in the freezer. Um, I also have like a bladder uh, um, palette that it's two-sided and it has like a ring around it. You can snap it closed and I can just throw that in the freezer. Um, that one's usually my travel one because I can literally just put it like, you know, like <laughs> vertical in my backpack and go. Um, but I use like just sheets of plexiglass because I've got a bunch of it because I'm constantly working at my shop. So um, I just have sh like just shards and I reuse them as much as I can, you know, before I deem them dead. We basically recycle everything here. So um, plastic plates, anything, anything you can use. Um, I'm going uh, to show off a little tour of some of the other oil painting uh, demos yeah. that we have here. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. this is the reinventing community that we keep talking about in the app uh, stores or community dot reinventing the tattoo dot com. I want to come in here to the library. I want to check out the videos and then well, for one, there's tons of art jams here and uh, some of the ones from uh, Renee's past here. But we if you scroll down here, we've got these all the all prima here with uh, Nick Baxter. And so this is uh, got all the required materials to do uh, the still life. It's, you know, this one's three hours and 26 minutes of, uh, yeah, of Nick going through doing a, a full still life here. It's out of control. Nick is such a <laughs> badass. I know. Um, oh God, don't do what I do and just like make your own still life and just do it. <laughs> I was uh, you know, you, well, you should, right? I mean, it's, uh, you, yeah. you kind of go through, uh, however, but let's see, he also has a, uh, Nick's got a landscape oil painting here. And yeah, we, mm -hmm. he talks about what brush brands and oils and, um, yeah, that one's yeah, a this, good one. There's another one, another three hours plus of, uh, yeah, Nick, Nick painting this. And then we've got, uh, rain, I think rain Del Mar did a, uh, or uh, Judy Parker with Mermaids, Nature Landscapes with Rain Del Mar. Uh, yes, yeah, this is a four and a half hour painting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see when, uh, when we get going, some of the Sunday nights we'll have a hell of a lot of people beaming in here. So, yeah, so this is uh, that's in the Art Jam folder. And then, but if you're looking for like some straight up how to kind of shit, or stuff uh, we've got in the VTG on demand. There's a, but this is a bunch of replays. And so painting a donut with Christina Ramos. Mm -hmm. uh oh, that's me big, but here, well, uh, this is her painting a donut. And let's see, we've got Matt Hurtado doing uh this is like straight up oil one Oh one here, right? This is, he's just working on a, uh, working on gradients and squares. And so it's like full on, you know, just how to get control of the oils in a very simple controlled format here. It's, it's freaking great. And then, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, so there's a whole mess of oil painting uh, tips and tricks. And yeah, these art jams, you know, and all of them here, there's uh, uh, all sorts of great questions and, and yeah mm -hmm. there we go okay yeah and you're you're never too old to watch them uh i feel like it's yeah like i i love those things because i uh everyone's such a different levels and different you know um like nick oh my gosh he's been just such an avid he's been able to just avidly paint through his tattoo career even where i know i'd like I like didn't paint for, I think like three years once, just because I was like tattoo, tattoo, I was obsessed. Um, and now it's like, I'm so thankful that there's a place that I can go and just like, like re-pick up, you know, the things that I had maybe lost during those times of just like refocusing on a different medium. Um, 
and they're just so knowledge. I, yeah, I, you always learn something new. <laughs> well, yeah. And with, with people like Necker guy or a lot of the people that are on here, you know, if you rewatch them a year or two later, you're in a different place. So you're able mm -hmm. and capable of understanding different things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly. It, it's a, uh, it's pretty fun. So a lot of people were, were talking about doing that with a Jeff Gogway seminar. They would, uh, you know, watch the seminar a couple of times, you know, or keep watching it and watching it and get new things out of it. Oh yeah. No, I can see that. Um, he has very good stories that he'll tell in the middle of explaining something. And then you realize like when he's done with the story that that was the explanation. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's very nice to like, you know, uh, pick up on his little nuances. I was always one person at shows. I was always glad to see. I'm like, oh, good. I can nerd out with that guy. Good. <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, oh. ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, oil is uh, pretty freeing too. Um, it just stays really nice and fluid and um, you can just kind of come back and swoosh things around. And I mean, there's so there's so many different little tricks you can do while you're painting with oils. Um, and oh my God, even right now, I'm just like, you know, I was telling you earlier, I was like, I've just been building out for the last, you know, forever. Um, like it's so uh, meditative and nice to be able to just paint. And oils is so forgiving. Um, it's always kind of funny when people say they're very intimidated about it. Uh, Neil says, thank you. Well, technically mm -hmm. says, thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, always here to help with uh, any more questions. Hope I hope I answered everything, um, like tip wise. Uh, oh, uh, get some linseed oil as well or a nice walnut oil uh, that will help you kind of move the paint uh, a little bit easier and play around with that. Get some mineral spirits or odorless mineral spirits. Um, and that's how you clean your brush. And be good to your brushes, everyone. Make sure you clean them and treat them nice. I see them as like little animals and you gotta like, you know, pet their hair in a certain way. <laughs> So you don't make them all uh, frayed and just unkept because then you have no control of what you're doing. And I've been having a lot of fun even working on that little still life that I started or with Nick, even though it wasn't, it wasn't the assignment. Uh, I'm going to finish it. So I'm still working. Why? Okay, so uh, I want to talk about why I guess uh, octopuses are kind of my jam. Because um, it didn't start until I want to say like 2012. Um, and I was having a hard time. It was like during that period of where I hadn't painted in, you know, three years. Um, everyone thought I was depressed and I probably was too, but just now I was just working, um, and figuring out where I was, what I was really doing in the tattoo world. You know, um, I was in Florida, so the industry down there is a little different, um, from what I've learned and it was pretty hard. It was pretty tough. You know, like we had that job, we had the, the housing market just crash and tattooing was really kind of, um, it was, it was a very hard, tough industry. It was very competitive. So I really had to give everything I had to it. But um, the, there was someone across the street from the studio I worked at that my mom actually knew. Um, and he was the fish guy of St. Petersburg, Florida. And he would uh, do the same thing that I do now. He would invite me to his draw nights. He would either have it a studio and then sometimes he did drink and draws. And I'm so excited about the upcoming drink and draw um, just cause there's something nostalgic to it, you know? Um, 
And I can't wait to get with a bunch of tattooers that are also artists and just, yeah, drink and draw. It's something that's really fun. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, oh, boy. Well, this one oh in particular, boy. The, the one that's coming up in March is a drunk critique. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got the, I got a message for that. Um, awesome. So sh should I like, you know, uh, just prepare to stay up all night or. <laughs> um, oh. pro yeah, it, might, it could get late. But it, it, okay. three hours max. We're not doing any nine-hour epics anymore. Oh, okay. That's what. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, no, I no, 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 no. That? It'll be like eight to eleven. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. The last drunk critique well, we... was good enough for like three months of drunk critique. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was there. That sounds amazing. <laughs> is that what archived? It is. Yeah, it's up there on the. Oh. Uh, yeah. Nine hours of drunk talk is archived. Nine hours. Oh. Uh, well, it was probably eight and a half hours of drunk talk. The first half hour, maybe <laughs> we're just getting into it. <laughs> oh, oh, no. But yeah, then Joey Cap uh, came in and Paul yeah. Booth beamed in. Let me see here. I'm going to. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to find the appropriate window. Oh, maybe this will just pop it up. Okay. What's showing? No, this is not showing the right thing. Stop. Um, let's see. So we're going to. Okay. Okay. So um, I don't know if I really want to be pointing everybody here, but library videos uh drunk critique and the epic you know we, there's more of them than there's these two but here's uh nine hours and 23 minutes and uh <laughs> let's see here let's let's beam in let's see where we were at at uh like what do you remember like they all started getting drunk right about now oh no idea when I mean, ah, oh. uh, there's where Kim Sai came in. She like came in for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. Is this playing? Oh, there we go. It, it, yes, we it, do. It, it, it's so bad, and I feel so bad for them, and I, I, I'm horrified for them because I mean, we 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 get we get help, <clears throat> but uh, the first. Let's jump to the middle. Of <laughs> that was almost here. a deal I had with Cheyenne. So oh, they're like, talking like, about oh, Cheyenne Bob now. Got into Cheyenne because of me. Kari Baba got into uh, Cheyenne. Yeah. Wait, so that means that Joe oh must have been yelling back here. You, you can turn around with oh, Bob, we don't see you. We see we your see table. Nice, Bob. You don't see nice me. Table. <laughs> Just and, hit the uh, yeah. thing around. Gabe, are you sleeping? Uh, no. <laughs> can, let me. Can I? Can I get? Can I jump into this? Because uh, you know, I don't think. Um, I think I'm the one who have seen this, like, in that... Um... Hey, tell me if you can't see me. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, man. exactly. Are you looking at the whole time? <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, we, we looked at a wonderful table. No, I heard you, Bob, but I... With beautiful reflections. I, I want to get oh, into... Sure, just... Hold on, how do I Is turn this? Tony wearing a I see all hat? you guys, except for me. I see... I see There's a oh, little gosh. two arrow thing. I can't believe yes, Tony no. is... Lewis says... Ryan says... No, no, you didn't. You're not reinventing. You reinvented that shit like fucking five years ago, dude. Yeah. <laughs> this is seven hours well, and forty. Seven hours and forty minutes in. <laughs> oh man! And the Bob yeah. Dylan portrait from Bob took twelve hours. That makes sense. And that was five. Yeah, I believe. Oof. Oof. I was just great seeing Tony drunk. I haven't seen him in forever. <laughs> You know, it uh, ends up, uh, yes, very much like that. Uh, well, that that was a little that. special. That was the uh, uh, holiday special. Right, we, don't, oh, we, don't always, we can't always do nine hours. We will never do nine hours again, maybe, until next Christmas. Holidays. Christmas. Okay. All it's right, not, we'll it's a holiday in. party, I'll not a Christmas party. I think if Tony saw me, he would literally shit his pants or heard me or anything. Cause it's been since, oh man, 
don't even know. I used to do the Asbury Park show um, a bunch, and that's when mm -hmm. I think I first met him. Um, oh, that would be nuts to see him again. Oh man, but no, I, I yeah, I, I think uh, I think that's what I miss even from conventions, um, like just kind of that interaction. Um, I've always been able to just be really relaxed around fellow tattooers. And, and we all kind of get drunk and just want to like scream to the world. But yet we all have like the same thing. Or that's what we discover is like we all feel kind of the same way by the end of the conversation, you know, and we can like hype each other up. Um, and that, that's wonderful, you know, and it's like we can't talk to our family about this stuff, you know um just because they wouldn't like quite understand necessarily some of them would but some of them mostly to mine wouldn't i would say that um yeah mine definitely not hey uh so uh heinz uh grain mm -hmm. from uh, germany is in the chat room oh, and oh, uh oh. he sent over a whole mess of pictures that i'm going to be putting into one of these 3d galleries but uh while he's there i'm gonna i'm gonna screen share this here Check out this shit. Whoa. So this is a, uh, let's see. So this is a collab between uh, Chris Morant, uh, Grand, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, and Heinz. Oh, it's Heinz's birthday today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Are you having, uh, Ooh, nice. are you drinking beer? Look at that, yeah. That's awesome, look at that, ooh. Look at that little portal in the back. That's nice. Oh yeah, I like that. That's very nice. Ooh, very slick. Ooh, yeah. The, <laughs> the light source on that one is just perfect almost. Oh wow, yeah, that's really nice. Oh, hey there, that's quick. I'm going to uh, yeah put these in that 3D gallery set up and mm -hmm. this is pretty pretty cool going through them here. Let's see, this is another. Are Chris. This still, is this still like a like the uh, is this just like free bio collab or is the bio collab that you guys had on here? This is from that Ooh. collab. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I have no idea. Heinz, did you? Uh, he, he, he's doing collabs all the time with all sorts of people. Okay. Uh, seem, some I of these might have been from that night. Oh, wow. But there's a lot of them. He, he sent over a couple dozen. Oof. Yeah, I see all that like organic texture up and like the little the little touches of organic. I'm like, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Ooh, that one's cool. It's like little bone shards coming through. That's nice. Oh yeah, I love that. I'm gonna go through the rest of these like half a dozen. God, I love bio. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty out of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bio encyclopedia is obviously. Uh... Do, do you have a copy of that? Have you checked that out yet? No. The oh wait, yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Sorry, yes. And it's, yeah, it's like, okay, I, I, I do. Okay, so I draw bio, but I, when I see stuff like this, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> ah, we'll get in and do, uh, do some collabs with folks. And no so, one yeah. will see my bio. Yeah, no, I know, I really do. The last time, um, yeah, the last time I even talked to someone about doing bio is like James Bulk. Um, and then COVID happened and we just both mm -hmm. kind of like got in our heads, you know. Um, and I was a little intimidated too, because that, I mean, there's like, I do very specific. I feel like I'm very specific with mine and I would need like, I probably would just need someone to actually just like, yeah, come on, let's do it. Like, get, like start it for me at least. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll do, we'll be doing uh, more of those bio collabs in the future. So this is a uh, Heinz uh, work here. Oh, this is a Heinz Brad Bacco from uh, Brad's from uh, Australia. Oh, nice. Oh, that's beautiful. And yeah, what day uh, do you guys do the bio collab? Um, it just, uh, pop, it'll pop up in the schedule. Oh, okay. It doesn't that. happen uh, regularly. Oh, look, we got a fair <laughs> amount. Oh, you know what? Let's, I'm going to hop down here a little. 
I don't want to. Oh, yeah. Look at, I love how we, the different artists bring the different flavors, too. Mm -hmm. I know. Did you see those little spikes in the very background? Yeah. It was adorable. It's very subtle. This, uh, Marcus <laughs> Liesch. My, my German pronunciation is horrible. But now, okay, so check these out. These mm -hmm. are all 3D shit. Oh, yeah. I love that subtle, like, uh, real light, light, light green up against all those real nice oh, pink oh, grays. Oh, flipping around now. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I think this is like ZBrush, would be my guess. God, that's cool. Uh, and a couple more. Oh, what the? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's like all these new little tools. I mean, we could just be using them to draw sleeves and like, imagine like that as a, like, yeah, it's just oh. it blows my mind. I've been playing around a lot with the light features with the VR. So hopefully I'll get to do oh, some yeah. crazy stuff coming up. Yeah. And I got a bunch of back pieces coming up. So I think all of them will be influenced by that. <laughs> I don't think I could help it. Uh, Barry in the chat room is saying so nice. Digging, uh, digging some of Heinz's work there. Hey, and boy, Andrew, you're painting, I'm sure. Yeah. No, Bruno uh, says, happy uh, birthday, Heinz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did you guys get, you guys got some frozen, or you guys got some freezing rains last week, didn't you? Yeah, little, nothing more than uh, usual, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, I mean, it wasn't too bad. Texas really got it bad, but I, uh, we had some rolling blackouts and I had a pipe burst at oh. the shop. Yeah, I just flooded one room. Oh, that sucks. It, eh, oh, yeah. it wasn't too bad. Yeah, I was like, it could have been a lot worse. But I was quick. I was very quick to act. So that's good. It was, I, uh, yeah, it wasn't too bad. No, for the most part, it's kind of pretty cold, but um, I'm a big fan of breathing in oxygen, which is fuel for their system. And, you know, if you're delib deliberate about it, you don't even have to get cold while you're walking through the, you know, I get down to zero degree weather. If it gets below zero, that, then I might think twice. But. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it was, I think it was five. And then I think it was negative four, I think was the coldest it got here, mm. um, which it just doesn't happen a whole lot. So, I mean, we don't have the infrastructure. Um, right. So everyone was snowed in for, I mean, an entire week we did know, I did, my clients are a little different, but most of my employees here, um, um, you know, my fellow tattooers, um, everyone canceled. So like no one tattooed for a week. Um, but my clients, oh. they were just like, no, we're doing it right. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to. We still have power, so let's do it. Awesome. Yeah. They're like, well, I don't want to wait three months, so let's do it. I'm like, okay. Fine. I, I, I'm from Florida, so, you know, we can, like, tap you through anything. I don't know if that's an excuse. You know, I like, I like to think it is. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're working all along the, oh, oh yeah. So um, like why the octopus? I, I always say too, like uh, if you can paint an octopus or even draw one that looks three-dimensional, brava. Um, Cause there is something uh, to play with background and foreground. And that's, that is where I really, really, I know I, that's kind of where my brain always goes when I'm painting. I want, I want drama. I want like someone to look into my paintings and see like a little world through um, what I force them to look at first. And the octopus is great because like we see all these circular patterns and all these little nautical, like little spirals, 
little golden ratio spirals, but um, really like you can control it either being um, like the edge of one suction cup could be super crystally clear where the rest of the tentacle can, you can tell that it's falling back behind the octopus or the beginning of a tentacle versus the very tip of it. Like I can make this look like a, a, a slinky that's unraveling and it's coming towards you and pushing it back. And I think it's like the rhythmic idea of getting that forward and backwards, like that's what's fun to me. Um, Cause then you can play with lighting, you can play with texture, um, uh, you can play with movement, you can um, kind of really play with the viewer's eye um, and your own eye while you're doing it um, and see like, what story do you want to tell of this creature? Um, Cause they are like, I don't know if everyone's seen one in the wild or up close, but they're rather inquisitive. Um, they get frightened really quickly. And when they get frightened, they do crazy things. You can see them kind of implode really quickly and hide inside some uh, coral or a little coral cave or, you know, a little rock with a hole in it. But to see like what they move forward first, like their little feet, um, and what they leave behind is really quite interesting because if you think about if us as humans were to run away, we kind of move our head forwards and our arms forwards and then our feet are tailing behind us. So they do have like designated like fronts and backs sometimes. Uh, yes. And I think that's that kind of tells about the body language of the beast and it kind of tells exactly like maybe they are going towards something or maybe they're headed towards something. So like this guy, um, I can make it look like he's headed towards this giant, you know, galaxy in the background because he's going to go probably eat some planets or something, um, of course. Um, but that's kind of the color play and why I, I choose the octopus so much, you know. Um, uh, another thing you can do that's kind of like this is you can do maybe like in the, in the aquatic field, you can do like a school of fish. It's the same principle, you know, in a school of fish, there's always like the leaders and sometimes they move around, but they're all headed in towards different directions. So if you can show that like, uh, maybe like the school of fish is turning or the school of fish is coming towards you or it's leaving behind you. You can do that all by choosing out which directions you want to show and bring forward and, and make it really crispy and really clear. And that can be your play on depth of field. Um, so I always try to make things a little technical because that's how my brain works. Um, I need that technicality. I need that difficulty just to be able to really be invested and entertained while I'm painting. Um, but some people, you know, if you want to just like paint for the fun of it and have no, you know, a, a non-responsible painting, as I call it, and sometimes I have those too, um, trying something really like a, yeah, like a still life or, um, you know, just anything kind of non-movement, non, I mean, this literally is a beast full of muscles. So it's going to, is going to show a lot of movement, a lot of motion. Um, and I sometimes, yeah, stagnant things are just kind of a little bit easier to paint because uh, they are what they are. Um, and it's a little bit more relaxing as well. But if I don't have conflict, you know, it's uh, I get bored pretty easily. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so Heinz was uh, saying, let's see, uh, Renee, you spoke about uh, VR. There are some really good programs for VR. Uh, Medium, for instance, is fun, which is VR sculpting. Ooh, okay. Check out Medium yet? I don't think I've checked out Medium. I'm trying to think of the one. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm having the biggest brain fart, and I've been having it since we've been talking about the VR. Um, the main painter one uh, that I've been using. Uh, it's like the only one that you can paint and do things, uh, but I'll check out, I'll check out the medium. Uh, I've also been checking out, there's an engineering one. So people are designing, you can design cars, you can design like actual sheets. Um, I've been using that one a lot. Um, that's because I have been designing a lot of my building. And so it's kind of been helping me, uh, see things a little clearer. Um, so I don't sound like such an idiot to some of my contractors. Um, <laughs> I'm like, no, like this. And then I, oh, one of them, I just showed him the VR like, like this. And he's like, oh my God, it was, it was very cool. And he's like, I have to get that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, thank you for the tip. Um, I think it's such a helpful tool. 
stupid Facebook. <laughs> oh, no, that came from uh, from the app from Heinz. You said it's really affordable, like twenty bucks. Oh, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, and that's the thing, affordable. Um, I kind of like went on a little binge there and was just get like downloading every free thing I could. Um, and then started like slowing down and really like, okay, what am I putting on this thing? Um, I think the most expensive thing I've bought so far um, was $35 and it was uh mist. Do you remember mist Gabe? You're of that era. I, oh yeah. I remember mist. I, I could program mist. What? Really? That would be the type of thing I would program back in the day. Oh, well, dang. Uh, yeah. Well, now you can actually walk through the island and read actual book. Like you can pick up a book. You can put it back on the shelf. You can walk around. You can go stand, oh, like yeah. stand near the water and watch the, like birds fly by. It's really it's kind like of crazy. Full on. Yeah, fully immersed. It's really wild. Um, there's some things on there that I, I you know Guy was saying that his vision is so particular you know they can't pick up three things um but i'm noticing i have vertigo um and i'm realizing that a lot of the i love space too which is so uh, it drives me crazy because i downloaded all these spacewalks and all of these like like imagine just the sun coming at oh, you yeah. pretty quickly and then you're in front of it and i what really did me in is that there's asteroids zooming past me and i looked behind me and saw Ooh. them coming and i had no there's no horizontal plane there's nothing they just have you floating in space so i i mean i could even like exit out of there i just had to take the goggles off and go oh my god and like like just look at a horizon line uh so some of it's pretty intense oh, um it's, it's always a good thing to yeah be aware of that if you download a space app you're going to be floating alone in space and it's very scary um, I remember showing so. off uh, the, some of the Miss VR via uh, whatever the YouTubes. Oh, yeah. I need to really get on there and uh, figure out how to film myself. I guess you were saying, you were saying it was medium, medium VR. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, my God. It's so cool. Okay. Good. Good. Oh, see, it's showing me, it's showing me all the tips. <laughs> like, don't show me, Gabe. I have to figure out the puzzle. This isn't mist. This is the uh, sculpting. Oh, okay. There we go. I saw the mist one. Uh, this is sweet. Crazy. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, and there's also um there's a spray can one as well that's pretty on point. Um oh wow, so you can cut it like clay. Oh, that's cool. How are you watching yeah, it now? I shut it off. Oh no, I think I'm delayed a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. So yeah, Heinz says there's also a pretty cool VR graffiti tool called King Spray. That's what it is. Yes, yes, yes. And it's it's very touch sensitive, so you can make it kind of just whisper, you know, out of the can, or you can make a splat, or you can you can really, really, it's really um, touch sensitive. And my friend does a lot of graffiti art, and he just raves about it. He says it's so lifelike. Nice. So if you want to brush up your graffiti skills. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a delay. Okay, let's see it at the end. Yeah. Look at that gloss that they put with the paint too. Yes. 
And I think like when you do the videos of it, it does mattify a lot of things when you're in the VR. It's oh, almost just, the texture. Yeah. The, the textures are so real that, I mean, everything is illuminated and just lifelike. It's, it's, it's sick. Dare I say it's sick. <laughs> but also just learning tools as well. Um, I, I believe in being a cultured, you know, um, fully rounded person, especially in the arts. You know, there's so many, um, and every culture has an amazing, um, uh, there's opportunities everywhere to learn different mediums, different styles, different reasons, for different symbols for things, different, I mean, everything. Um, the more knowledge you have, of course, you know, the more powerful you can be in your craft, whatever that may be. Um, there is a lot, of, there's so many apps on there for travel and uh, just visiting different countries, different places. And I thought it'd be kind of cheesy, like these pre-selected places, but no, some of them you have full control. You can like swim around a uh, coral reef system in Jamaica. Um, mm. It's, and so even there, like I can get references, I can get all kinds of things. Um, because I mean, they're just that clear. They're that bright. And I mean, honestly, now, like with ble like coral bleaching and things like that, like our old colorful references of old have kind of gone away. And I, I think I've gone through every single National Geographic from the 70s I possibly mm -hmm. can, you know, to forget like different new references or I, you know, plague my friends who do underwater photography or something. But I mean, this is a whole new element because you can just be in it, go down there yourself and get the right angles you want. Mm. And that I think is so cool. Um, and even, I mean, um, I look a lot at um, like gaming books and like Kotexes for like Warhammer and things like that because the artwork is so wonderful. But then I always think, oh, it'd be so cool to see this character in a certain view you know, just to make sure I get the lighting right or something. But now you can actually go into the VR system, walk around that character and snap mm -hmm. a photo of it. And there you go. You know, that's insane to me that that has that much uh, flexibility. Yeah, it's out of control. So let's see. So Heinz says that uh, the King Spray has multiplayer, which is pretty sick. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. And then uh, let's see. I told you. Uh, Oh, as you were talking about the VR space app, mm -hmm. um, I highly recommend Sandbox Universe. You can okay. create your own solar system and even throw moons onto a planet and stuff like that. What? Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Sandbox Universe. Sandbox Universe. Thank you, sir. Hell yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I love the multiplayer too. There's um, there's a lot of different meeting places. And so far I've tried events and rec room is kind of fun. Um, if you just want to go kind of putz around with your friend and play some games. Um, and it's pretty incredible how it works. Um, just because there are, you know, thousands of people using the same app um, and you can go there and meet people, talk to people. Um, and you see them walking around, you can approach someone and talk to them. Um, but they only, you know, if it's all, if you're on the same server, then you can see them. So it is pretty nice that you can even keep like a really tight knit community that you can look at and see and communicate with. Um, and then like go just do anything. So I didn't know about that multiplayer. That's awesome. I have to download that tonight. Anybody wants to spray paint with me? That'd be fun. Showing off the uh, Sam Universe Sandbox. Oh, shit. Oh, you know I'm going to use that. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. But that's the Milky Way still. I wonder if they have different backdrops. Oh, that's a planet that's, oh, that's amazing. Okay. Exactly, look at that reference. I mean, 
Yeah, that's awesome. Yep, downloading that tonight. And that's, I mean, that's the addictive part of it is that everything yeah, is cheap, you, but just not like I buy everything. <laughs> Just a, a wormhole after wormhole. No, no pun intended. Wormhole after wormhole. <laughs> yeah, this is. It makes me feel like a kid in a candy store, and I want everything. I am so close to getting one. Of, I'm not so close. After uh, I go on vacation with the family, then I'll oh, come back yeah, and yeah. I'll get one for research. <laughs> Yeah, for research, research, yes, yes. <laughs> I uh, I got one to give one to my father, you know, um, which was totally true. But I'm like, you know, it doesn't hurt to get myself one. If it's for multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, Gabe, we're gonna we're gonna go do some shoot 'em up games. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, my business is I'm, I'm I've always been a strategy game kind of a guy, so. Oh yes, yes. The, uh, and I'm I'm horrible at any of the Twitch ones. Mm -hmm. uh, Hein says <laughs> the, actually... uh, the octopus looks great. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're just slowly building layers. Actually, that was the one that my dad and my sister got most excited about was playing the shoot 'em up games because that's what we used to do when we were all kids. So I'm like, you guys pick the one you like, and we'll get on there. Mm -hmm. and me and my sister are pretty ruthless. We're pretty good but i haven't yet even played one because i've just been so obsessed with all the art applications and just hanging out with my buddy yeah and that is really nice i didn't even realize how bad like it is it's almost it's almost good enough i'll say that to be able to hang out with like a close friend that you can't normally see a lot sure it's 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 almost like, yeah, all right, this is good. All right, this will get me through, you know? Um, like, I still can't wait to see them in person all the time, but it's, it, it, yeah. I mean, I, we had a little slap fight for, you know, <laughs> <laughs> five minutes just because we could. Like, nice. it, was like just, it was like we were little kids and we can discover together, you know, uh -huh. and go follow each other around, you know, like, what's this, what's this? That's awesome. Interact with other people. And people are, there are some douchebags on there, but you can't block them. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny because it's like, they can't hurt you, but they're just, you know, they're everywhere. Um, and it's just kind of funny that, um, I don't know, you can like deal with them on this whole other level. That's pretty fun. So uh, Art by Mike just tuned in and said hi. Hello, hello. So I guess this is a good time to ask people, uh, has anybody seen the uh, new Jeff Gogwe video teaser? Ooh, no, no. If, uh, if you haven't, say so in the chat room and then we'll go play it. <laughs> we'll just go play it anyways. Yeah, I don't like, I haven't seen it. Let's see it. Let's go see Jeff. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're going to see Jeff. Okay, I just, uh, yeah, this is just 26swords.com. Um, let's see here. I, I just saw this new video out now. Like, Ooh, here we go. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of kids. They are crazy. And I hope to talk to you later. I hope keeps you awake tonight. I hope that your mind. What are we? What are we calling it? It's called Less Is More on here. Let's go. Yeah. Less Is More. Okay. I'm not gonna play the whole thing because. Uh, that was intense. You have, you have to go. You have to go see his. Uh, go see it on his page. <laughs> It's pretty awesome though. Yeah, that was super uh, well. Ooh, yeah, I like the, it was well like um, edited. That had, me, that had me sucked in, that was good. Well. Oh, let's see. 
Are you still there? I think I just had like a little blackout. Oh, no, I am still here. Yes. Oh, okay. I think my headphones, yeah, my headphones are good. Okay, good, good, good. Figure probably go for about another 15 minutes and then uh, yeah. gives me a little time to turn it over for the exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I can do this little thing. Okay. So we're getting to the point of where I'm pushing this forward, or this tentacle forward, right? So we've been working this whole time pushing it back. And we do that because black is really, really high pigmented. Um, it's kind of hard to lift up. So if we can just kind of let it dry a little bit and go over it, this will like start building up that layer of creaminess and texture. So if this light is coming over here from this giant um, galaxy, then my highlights will be kind of more on the tips in the front, the front, because that's where the light would kind of go through and just subtly glance upon him there. But just bringing that little subtlety of bright can really bring that uh, first tentacle out more. And I'm gonna let this whole section dry actually and probably go through and even darken up now the suction cups um, to kind of get these front suction cups um, more present and then these guys more present and then kind of push back everything else. So it really will kind of look like again, a slinky uh, that was stationary and we just pulled out that center. And yeah, it'll kind of look like our office is trying to reach out to us, the viewer, and reach out to um, this little galaxy. So that'd be fun. It looks like a true, beautiful little monster. Because <laughs> they are freaking terrifying in person. But you know, I think that's actually why I paint them. So let's see. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions at all, um, you can ask away. If not, um, totally write it on the comments anyways, and I can always address it for next time. I'm always down for that. Um, I know it's always an odd day on Monday. That's like my one day that I can do it. So I always know people watch it afterwards. Y'all tell me and thank you so much for your comments and your support. I really just do it because I uh, think that painting really helps the mind and the spirit and uh, even though I'm not the best practitioner of self-care, I really hope that everyone else is right now um, mm -hmm. because shit's still kind of crazy. So um, everyone can paint if they just put forth a little bit of effort. And uh, a lot of people have a lot of time right now. So why not? And it's kind of gifting yourself something too when you're done you know, you've definitely accomplished something. I don't think there's a whole lot of things you can do these days to get that same kind of enjoyment of um, completing something than other people can enjoy as well. As I mean, right, lately I've been collecting and collecting again. I have, yeah, it's one of those times. <laughs> and I just love other people's art, you know. Um, I try to get rid of paintings as fast as I make them. Um, but I love looking at other people's art. Um, so I make sure that I'm constantly collecting just as much as I'm constantly painting um, because their paintings also highly influence me as well. And uh, hopefully makes my art even better. Um, even, yeah, it's just tentacles. <laughs> lots and lots of tentacles. Uh, and make sure when you clean up, if you've been painting quietly, you know, make sure that um, you don't stop when I do, unless you want to. Just keep going um, and make sure you really, really treat your brushes well, because they are like our little pets or our little creatures that will help us through. Um, and when you really get to know a brush, you know, it really will help your painting career um, or just it will help your paintings because you have better control. Um, you know how it'll react, you know what it'll do. And the faster you can get out of thought, I always say the better. So if you're fighting your tools, um, you know, it'll make things really hard and kind of slows you down. So treat your brushes well out there and practice some, some tentacles if you want, or some space or some fish or whatever. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, I didn't do any galaxy, but I definitely got some nice, some nice beginnings to this oil. 
So hallelujah. We did it, Gabe. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's looking great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's funny. Half, half the time, I don't know whether my mic is on or not. Oh, same. Let's see. So uh, Art of Mike says, I've been working on painting scully and tentacles. I'll post a pic to the app. Oh, wonderful. Awesome. Very, very awesome. Yeah, everyone share on the app. Um, same thing. If you have any little videos, you know, anything that you kind of share can definitely help someone else that's trying to learn, you know, and that's what I like about the app, to be honest, not a sales pitch. Um, I like that the people that are on there are all doing the same thing. We all want to learn. We all want to grow. Um, we all want to get a little bit better. Um, and so there's so many tricks uh, in this trade that can, I mean, maybe derbs, you know, how to sit correctly uh, so you can prolong your career or maybe Nick's, you know, very, very instructional um, videos about how he attacks a painting to me just kind of rambling on about how, uh, what I'm doing or why my theories are the way they are, you know. Um, everything kind of helps because uh, we all think differently, uh, like two planets passing in the night, you know, um, and sometimes we match up. Sometimes, you know, someone speaks the same language. Um, you know, for me, sometimes it'll take like five people, but, you know, um, yeah, you just got to find your language. And I think so. there's got to be at least someone on the app that you know, you think like, because there's so many people now. It's uh, just a uh, uh, cruise past a thousand. And uh, yeah, to your okay. point, it's pretty awesome that it's all people that are there to, you know, inspire and create art. And uh, mm -hmm. at first, when I realized I wanted to post up some pictures of some random pictures, I was like, how come I can't just post pictures on my, like my personal account? And the, uh, I was talking with the developers and they're like, no, 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 you, you have to post in a group, you know, it's okay. It keeps it on topic. And I was like, I don't get it. What if I just want to post up a picture of like any th random thing? And then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, mm -hmm. you have to post up mm -hmm. a tattoo picture or an art picture, you know, mm -hmm. or a travel picture, something for critique, something in the marketplace. There's actually not even a politics group which is mm -hmm. so awesome. I love it. It's like there's people that I want to fight to the death on Facebook, but I love them on reinventing. Ugh. Right, right. And that's it. I think if we're given a platform to just do what's actually important, I think Facebook has just become a platform of hate speech or, you know, it's like an open diary to the world. I don't think, you know, that's... Well, it's, it's, it's the, the algorithms are designed specifically, like it doesn't even make a difference what you're what, what, it doesn't make a difference what's going to keep you on it. That's what it's going to feed you. That's what's designed to feed right. you. And so Scary. if that actually truly is puppy dogs and, you know, pink bunny rabbits, then that is actually what it will feed you. Um, oh, unfortunately, human nature is <laughs> pretty dark and real easy to go down rabbit holes. Oh, yeah. No, I, thank goodness I just see pictures of my niece and nephews. But I know it's on there, so I just get off of it. I'm like, okay, I saw my pictures. I'm done. Nice. Yeah. It, it yeah. tries. It's amazing to watch it like tempt you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, we might get Heinz to zoom in. Yeah. I'm going to try to get him to zoom in for a birthday beer. Oh, yeah. Of course, then I realized that I just typed in beam in for a beer to someone who speaks you know, German natively. So it's like, I wonder how that, how does that translate? I'm sure the same German, uh, the conversation yeah, he, he figured is pretty cool. Cool. Like he yeah, asked yeah. if, uh, you know, you mean, I try to like use norm, you know, more normal words sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like even beaming in is a little bit of an odd. Uh... Well, I mean, everyone had Star Trek, right? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go get a beer and have one for Heinz's birthday, whether he beams in or not. I'll be right back. That's, that sounds amazing. Have one for me, Kate. I'm still at work. <laughs> I will have a beer uh, when I get out of work today for you. And happy birthday.
Yeah, it looks like he might be in. Oh. Voila. Oh man, it's getting to be what? It's uh, two thirty there now. Um. Yes, yes. Hey, Heinz. Uh, hello. How goes it? Happy okay. birthday. Happy Thank birthday. You Cheers. I have to be careful. This is my good camera. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sitting on the couch because it's, uh, yeah. Hey, Heinz. It's your birthday. <laughs> oh, you're also, are you playing it in the background? Hey. Thank Happy you. Birthday. Hi, Heinz, I think you might be playing it in the background. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting on the couch. Because... Uh, I love the echo panic. So how old are you now? 40. Four zero, Ooh, okay. Good job, you made 40 it. Forty years old, yes. Congratulations. But unfortunately, I can't have a party, so fuck Corona. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. hopefully yeah. you'll and have another forty. Forty-one yeah. would be my year. Mm -hmm. Wow! Exactly. And uh, I th what is the uh, average age of uh, the males in in Germany? Is it is it like it's eighties at seven or seventy six? Yes, I think it's 80, 81, 82, maybe. You're still oh, hoping it's 82. So. That way you're not quite halfway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, what else did you do really today? Cool. Anything? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, what is there to do during COVID where you're at? I'm it's in like Germany. Computer. We're in a lockdown right now. So oh, I can't yeah. work for a month now. And oh. we're uh, all waiting here to to open our shops again. Right. So we're no, really getting a lot of money, and uh, it's a bad situation. Yes. Yeah, so and the the government's go not uh, kicking you any dough. Oh. Uh, yes, they they promise us uh, some money, and it took a little time, but they gave us some money. So it's okay. Uh, I can survive, but um, yeah, yeah, better. I don't. I don't mm -hmm. like to, to get money from the government. I, Same. I like no. Don't either. I absolutely would way prefer to work the, uh, but uh, generally, you know, if I have to take it from the government, then I actually I'd usually just work twice as hard. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> I gotta get out of this. But obviously, you just need y'all just need to wait until the. Uh, yes, we have to until wait. everything lifts. It's uh, right. Yeah. So. I I, I want people to survive, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't want older people here to die. So, is that the way? Yeah, it's mm, the way. Thank it's you. Okay for me, but thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a. It's been pretty eye opening here in Oklahoma about who doesn't care. Um, it's not like they don't believe it; they just don't care. Yeah. So I've but been. Continue. Yeah. I've, this is a little fascisty to me, so I, um, you know, I'm I'm a stubborn little lady, and just feels like I get into some kind of argument with someone who just wants to intimidate me, um, because they get close too, like they where they normally I don't think would. I think people are abusing the sense of new power or something that they have. It's like they have a secret weapon and they can walk around and be an asshole. Um, yeah. No, yeah no. so yesterday uh, the weather was really really beautiful here it's, it was a sunny day the first really really sunny day and uh yeah in a, in a town next to us people went crazy they all went went outside oh. without masks and they said yeah it's, it's such a beautiful weather i just want to enjoy my life yeah fuck you mm -hmm. <laughs> we all do yeah, fucking assholes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah friend, I laughed. A friend of mine, he lost his father of COVID. Oh. And I, I have friends that really got sick of that shit. And mm -hmm. uh, 
another friend of mine she's a nurse and she was uh, in the front line and mm. she felt sick for four weeks and it's mm -hmm. now i think yeah seven weeks yeah. later now she's not 100 percent fit and mm. uh, she was not in a risk group but it got her from the back so mm. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, this is becoming a new thing where now we're going to start hating one another just for being careless, um, which I don't know how this is going to play out in the next 10 years, but it'll be interesting. Yeah. But I'm sorry to hear that. It really and, and people here tell me that, that Bill Gates want, want, want to kill them. So I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what's in their mind. I people say, are crazy. I always say don't watch too much movies, so or maybe don't well, play too are, much video games. It's... Yeah, yeah. You know, or maybe like watch it to, for entertainment, realizing it's fiction. Yeah, I mean, for me, the sad part is the conspiracy part of it. It's like the shit that people are pulling is right out in the open. You know, it's not like the people that are playing politics are like they're not. They don't even really hide it all that much. No. You know, and you know, the, the, the really, it's about the money, you know, and obviously there's a lot of money that we can't see, but we can see a lot of the money and, and uh, really dangerous, all those ideas. It's so it, dangerous. It, absolutely. And, and, and I feel just, I mean, clearly distractions from like the real issues and the real, you know, the, the, the real things yes. that they're doing. Yeah, it's the like, real things. I think in Germany, uh, our history uh, has shown how mm -hmm how dangerous stupid ideas can 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 be yeah so, 100 anyway, percent uh, uh, here in my life yes you know it, it dawned on me about a, a year or two ago and you'll you'll you know as you're getting older it'll hit you know the uh the amount of time from like the height of world war ii and you know when all that shit was really going down and my birthday is actually a shorter amount of time than between my birthday and now. And I'm like, oh, wow, like that, that should, it wasn't history. Like they taught mm -hmm. that as history. That was current events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's real, it's real crazy to see, you know, the other thing to think about, especially for us with this election too, to, you know, not to directly relate, but, you know, politics takes decades for cycles to go around, you know, and, Mm -hmm. uh, just because, you know, our, you know, our person is knocked out or, or their person's knocked out or whoever is knocked out now doesn't mean they're not coming back in 10 years stronger than ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, exactly. And you know, uh, a few months before, before the crazy people went into your capital, they tried the same in Germany. So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. oh. but not that bad, not, not that bad than, than in America, but they tried. Right. They tried. Yeah. That, that's a dangerous message to to well, all the other insane people that are all, that that think the same way and right all these people uh they 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 tell me yeah we live we live we, live, uh, we have a dictator here no we don't have a dictator here. yeah you can demonstrate and you can say anything you want to at any time and right. mm -hmm. you won't get shot, you won't get to jail because you, we have the freedom of speech here. And people tell me, yeah, no, no, you don't understand. And there are plans going on. Yeah, for sure. There are always plans going on. Well, there on. will be if people keep acting crazy. Yes. Um, and that's the dangerous part, you know, that like they don't see that they're creating their own reality. Um, mm and yeah i don't think people have really quite realized what it's like to have their rights taken away everywhere and for those people to say yeah it's like yeah like these aren't your rights being taken away this is just wear a mask and stay indoors and be safe and considerate of your fellow man like and woman or whatever it's it, it's so basic but yet they want to blow it out to be this i've been abused and i'm victimized um <laughs> Uh, I think that's where truly people are losing their minds. Yeah, I, I just wish people can understand definitions and be precise in their language. Mm -hmm. And like to your point, like, yeah, you can't call something like if you start crying dictator when it's not, it's like you're not actually using the words appropriately. You might be like, hey, I right. feel like we are going down a path towards a dictator, you know, but like to your point, like, you know, 
I've had people get really mad at me for being a communist. And it was like, I'm an international <laughs> businessman. Like, I don't like, I'm not a communist. Like, but, uh, let's see. Okay. So what do we have here? We have a uh, uh, Sandy dialed in and says, uh, hi guys. Couldn't make it for this. I uh, got to try to eat before the Monday exercise, but it's really nice to see you. Uh, beautiful oh, octopus you. Renee and happy birthday. Heinz. Thank you. Oh, very thank, much. You. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sandy. Oh, and to be honest, uh, America is far away from being communist. Far away from being communist. Oh, man. Far, like, I mean, far, far away. I, I, I was definitely thinking about it. I, I had a conversation with a, with a friend of mine, and he was like, you know, usually, like, he, he's very centrist, you know, in his thoughts, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But, like, he was like, you know, you're about as, you know, left as I, like, would be comfortable with having a conversation with. Like, when you get past you i'm like i'm a wicked progressive liberal right but then i was thinking about it i'm like in america i am but like in europe i'm like full-on centrist like like in the middle like i just want what's best for everybody like i'm not a you know i'm not a whacked out lefty uh compared but but here in america uh the the everything's so skewed differently that mm -hmm. uh yeah it just feels uh feels nuts it is nuts, but on the other hand, I do like to talk and engage with lots of you know lots of people from all sorts of thought processes. Mm -hmm. um, well, you're an interviewer, so you have to leave that open, free format of space so people can talk. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people haven't been doing in our politics, and it does kind of make me a little upset because no one's leaving that open space. So like, let's have an actual discussion. Everyone just yells at one another. Um, and I don't think, uh, you, know, you know, that's why we're divided, maybe, maybe. Um, because, I mean, I've got both sides on my family and I am the one that's in the middle where no one really knows what I think because I'm just like trying to make sure that they don't kill each other. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, but I mean, yeah, no, same you... thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm a dirty liberal as well. <laughs> I mean, it used to be uh, the point where you can engage in like actual debate. Mm -hmm. You know, I love looking at old debates and it's like, you know, you actually try to argue for like, you know, pieces, parts, you know, that are productive in mm -hmm. the, in the conversation and not just, uh, the insane, you know, the, the shit that they call it debates on the TVs are just, it's fucking oh, embarrassing. Uh, embarrassing. <sighs> that oh. Yeah, Trump if anyone has ever. Biden debate that was. I saw it and I thought myself, holy shit, these guys want to be leaders. So mm -hmm. why don't they behave like that? Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Unbelievable. Like unbelievable. Like two little boys uh, mm -hmm. on the playground. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, I don't know if they have the same. I'm sure they don't have the same game or some of the same games. But uh, like I always I, I think of it over here as the um, they had, like in school, they have like the popularity contest. <laughs> right so it's yeah. like who's the most who's the most popular kid in school or who's the most popular couple in school and uh in politics it's almost like whoever you know whoever wins the popularity contest uh gets to play the the risk game or the access and allies game like whoever you know wh whoever wins a popularity contest gets to play the war game mm -hmm. and it's like whoa wait a minute like uh, uh, uh. but why don't we get the know. person who knows how like who has studied and as experience and is qualified to play the war game. How about that? Yeah. How about we actually get people qualified to do these jobs that are so important? But it's the same here in Germany. We have some politicians. Uh, I don't know why they have that position. It's just because well, you got, maybe money and, and maybe, yeah. I it don't know. It takes money to get elected, you know, okay. so you have it already, it's super easy, you know. I just want to know when the general population thought that politics was entertaining. When did, they, like, we used to watch politics like serious citizens and hear people's roles, but now people are calling it entertainment. And it's the only thing you hear on the news. It's the only thing that's on the radio. Like, why is, are we really that bored that politics well, now is our entertainment? There, there used to be like uh, actual regulated walls, right? So the, the airwaves are, were considered or are considered part of the commons, right? So like if you, so mm -hmm. if you were going to be broadcasting out through the public's airwaves, 
then it's sanctioned, you know, by the people. So they had regulations mm -hmm. that were like, um, you know, uh, you could only own so many media outlets at the same time, right? So like you right. can either have like a newspaper or a television station or a radio station. Okay. Um, and then through the course of, you know, deregulation and, and et cetera, et cetera, I think it started with uh, maybe on Reagan's watch or Bush's watch and then it went to Clinton. Anyways, Clinton signed into law uh, deregulation of the media. And oh. so that was the, the spot where you could now own, you know, 30 radio stations in the area or, you know, basically, the you know, it deregulated how much media one person could own. So instead of having lots of locally owned stations that broadcast stuff with their own independent voices, you could, you know, gobble up and eat up as many media outlets as you wanted to. And then the other thing that uh, changed was there was a very strong wall in between advertising and content. So you would, mm -hmm. uh, you'd be obligated to have like a certain amount of news that was probably NPR ish news or, you know, there was, there was, you had certain obligation for that, but, um, but your advertising department wouldn't talk to your content department. And when they started taking down those walls, then it's like, okay, well, you obviously then your advertisers, the people that are paying, are going to be the ones that start to, to provide your content. And uh, so as far as, you know, and again, to, to Heinz, to your point of like propaganda and being able to actually manipulate people through, you know, uh, uh, the media, that, that's how they were doing it with the quote traditional media. Mm -hmm. um, now, just to wrap this up, like one of my fucking biggest pet peeves is people online and on the social media you know, the social media. They're, they're on the social media bashing the traditional media with links from traditional media. They're like, no one's ever talking about this fucking stupid story. That's a distraction. I'm like, you asshole, you're literally linking to a story about that fucking story. Like, like it's ugh, never. Well, they mind. don't watch it. They, yeah, I know. But, I but know. the thing is, they, they, if, if they, yeah, for one that you're right, they don't watch it, but they're like literally pointing to a story in the media. And it's like, uh, and then and then it's like, no, not for nothing. But you can't go and bash the normal media without acknowledging that you're on social media, which is literally designed to agitate you and post fucking bullshit in front of you to chase, so you can chase it down for the next three hours. Well, that's one thing they'll never believe because that's the only power and position in life they have. There are people so who would... bash each other with headlines, just with the headlines. So uh, yeah, uh -huh. you read the headline. Did you read the the article? No, but yep. it no. says, yeah, it's the headline says something to sell you stuff, but mm -hmm. you have to read the article. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why I feel more politically driven, but I also want to buy something now. <laughs> and and my, my, favorite, uh, my favorite argument is always, but I can show you a video on YouTube. Yeah, I know all the videos on YouTube. And don't oh, sure. yeah. No, I had an Dude, I can, we, we, we could all make fucking videos on YouTube. Like by now, <laughs> that's so tired. Okay, so let's see. So Tivon's in the chat room. Hey, all, I just realized this was going on. Uh, getting ready for tonight's class and trying to catch up on some art. The octopus looks awesome, Renee! Exclamation point. Ah. And also, <laughs> happy birthday, Heinz. Thank you. Hey, uh, uh. Aww, I got to call it on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, Art, Art of Mike says, put them all on minimum wage and then see how many keep their role. Uh, presumingly talking about government people or... Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah, then we'll see who really wants to take all the shitty responsibility of leading us. I, I don't trust anyone that actually wants to lead. I mean, yeah, who would want tough, that tough, responsibility? It's a tough call. It really is. Yeah. I don't know. You know, there's a couple people that seem to be consistent over time, but then... Uh, it's hard to have mm -hmm. faith. Now, we have an election faith. here in Germany in September, so oh, wow. I know what happened. Uh -oh. So get to yeah. get the, the hype. But, uh, Heinz, we need to finish our birthday beers because it's getting late for you, and we need to switch this over. Okay. Cheers. Thank you Thank you. Oh, Cheers. absolutely, of course. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs> Renee, you want to close this out? Oh, yeah, sure. This is great. Well, I'll continue this next time and we'll get into some galaxy and layering. So everyone stay tuned for or stay tuned for next week or next last Monday. I don't know what that is.
last month. Yeah, well, maybe? the next time. But yeah. and how, how could people get a hold of you and find you? And if uh, anyone wants to collab, how, how would they get a hold of you? I am on uh, Instagram under Renee Little Tattoos. Um, if you'd like to DM me there or if you'd like to just um, hit me up on Renee Little, um, tat- or Renee Little But Mighty Tattoos at gmail.com. Um, I check that pretty regularly. So that's a really good way to contact me. And uh, yeah, or you can visit my shop website. It's Goldfang Gallery. And that's G-O-L-D, Goldfang Gallery at gmail.com. Um, you can kind of see my, um, my portfolio there and uh, see if there's any new things coming up. I'm going to start um, a little blog coming up. So that could be fun. But uh, yeah, hit me up. Let's do some cool collabs. That'd be nice. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thanks again, Heinz, for uh, beaming in. You got some serious work and uh, it's fun to see your tattoos in real life too. Um, and we are switching this over now so that uh, if anybody is a subscriber to Reinventing, then uh, you'll check your links and click the buttons. And if you are not, then in watching this replay, you should go to uh, reinventingthetattoo.com, uh, find that uh, the Reinventing Canon, and then subscribe because it's a way to uh, yeah, beam in and get uh, instructions straight from Guy. Um, anyways, okay, thanks again, everyone.